Hello folks and welcome to Gotham City Knights video series. This video will be a Batman Miniatures Game 3rd Edition Battle Report. This is our fourth Battle Report and again, due to COVID-19, has been played on Tabletop Simulator, the mod produced by Captain Blue. We seek to not just show you how our games play out, but also give you insight to our strategic and tactical decisions throughout. My name is Kaiwis and my opponent is Landra, and today we put the Court of Isles up against a Deathstroke-led Soldiers of Fortune list. It uh, seems that it's going to be a bloody one, with both crews set out to murder each other. So let's take a look at how the crews were set up. First crew up is the Court of Isles. Court of Isles is one of the newest releases from Night Models, released um, in March just past. They have a lot of new mechanics that we'll talk about throughout the game in terms of how they murder people on the board. Um, their boss in this case is the court, which is uh, basically a collection of four Court of Isles members on a chair. <laughs> that brings a lot of different abilities to the board uh, and is more about a sphere of influence than actually doing anything actively. Uh, I've opted for a six-man crew. Quite a lot of equipment out there to give a bit more flexibility. It's a very fast crew with all those genetic alterations giving fast out. Talon, which is Calvin Rose, uh, is one of the newest miniatures as well. Bringing a bit of stun damage to the board, so a bit of flexibility in case anything doesn't want to die through blood damage. Um, and then we've got William Cobb, Ephraim Newhouse, Henry Ballard and Strix. All attack four, all defense four across the board. Very strong, very fighty list. This was only our second game playing with the court, um, so I tried to keep it as uh, straight as possible with the actual release and not take too many of the uh, crew specific objective cards out. Uh, I did have a bad experience with the Isles Knight the first time round, so I did uh, sub that out for valuable commodities in overdrive just to give myself a little bit more flexibility, a little bit less uh, requirement to keep killing specific prey. Um, just as a note, we are using the newly updated and errated version of the cards that Knight released on Friday the 16th. Uh, so that gives the Isles a little bit more viability, thankfully. Taking a look at the Soldiers of Fortune list that Salander brought, we have Deathstroke the Terminator, as I mentioned, as the leader. He can be a leader in Soldiers of Fortune, whereas he's a free agent everywhere else. He's outfitted with the Bastard Sword, which is really killy, and the Modified Assault Gun, which is really killy. Um, backed up by a free agent in Ratcatcher, uh, who brings three sewer swarms, very important to this list because they are bodies that the Soldiers of Fortune rely upon to score quite a few of their objectives that are sort of positional based and control based. Infiltrate uh, is probably one of the best miniatures and an almost an auto include in Soldiers of Fortune. Brings so many tools, including hacking and the radio, so uh, she has a lot of ways to get actions. Malasia, uh, with Deathstroke specific equipment on it, the martial training, making her quite a bit harder to kill, even though she is extremely hard to kill anyway. Some extra speed on her through the neurotoxic drugs. Uh, finished out by handy old Stealth Up with a lovely katana, Handy Sharp, and Gustav Gustafsson with his assault ruled weapon. Similarly, on the other side, uh, Salandra has a mostly Soldiers of Fortune focused deck because uh, she, this is only the second time she's played with the crew, so sticking to what we think the designers are asking us to do. The one card, well, the one co copy of cards dropped out is Hard Point, instead replaced by Die Hard, which is a protection objective, and Overdrive, which is nice to keep pumping out Venom doses into the game. So now we're at the table, and we rolled off in the pre-game section of the game. Uh, I won the roll as the Court of Isles, and we drew the Vanguard um, deployment, which is opposite corners in like a 12-inch uh, triangle. And then the event was the data extraction one, which allows a crew that has sole control of the data extraction event marker to score objectives from hand, even if they haven't actually fulfilled the the requirements so looking at the actual deployment um, obviously deployment would have been oils first 
then Soldier of Fortune and back and forth, but we had a couple of special deployments with Undercover and Hidden on both sides. Um, so you can see that on the Isle side, the only people actually in the deployment zone are Ballard and Strix. Ephraim Newhouse was about four inches ahead because of the Vanguard rules. Uh, William, William Cobb took a different approach in the middle street, sort of looking to move up but quickly with his undercover rule. Um, the court is hidden and was placed there. Um, actually placed before Ratcatcher, just as a note, because Ratcatcher was down last. But then we have Calvin Rose, who initially was in the object uh, in the deployment zone, but used his scout move to get a quick start on getting up the table. Soldiers of fortune wise, and um, there is literally only one person in the deployment zone, just Gustav, who's right on the corner, within eight inches of Deathstroke. Deathstroke did deploy again normally, but used his scout move before the first raise the plan to get out ahead and put pressure on the oils immediately. Malasia was deployed with the uh, Vanguard rules, sort of four inches ahead, giving her, again, huge threat range uh, in the middle of the table and elsewhere. You've got Stealth Up, who again was on undercover, so eight inches ahead of the deployment zone. He's down the main, um, main road of the board. And we've got Claire, or Infiltrate Up, the hidden miniature. Again, sort of covering two angles, two alleyways immediately. Uh, just a note on lamppost placement, I tried to avoid lighting up areas where the guns might be a problem because there's some nasty guns on the Soldier of Fortune side, but Salander was able to counter that and place her own in a place which she wanted to go. Uh, the sewers themselves, again, I tried to use the sewers in a way that the court's resources might actually be helpful. Um, you know, if I was ever to push uh, opponent miniatures through sewers to somewhere else, Salander placed one right in the middle, and she actually got to place three because of Ratcatcher's extra rules. Ratcatcher deployed last uh, in contact with said sewer, that really sort of setting up that barrack uh, in the middle of the table for him to start scoring the likes of free for all and then pushing down the table to get close to score the likes of grind war from hand at the end of the turn. Um, the other thing to note here is we have the three aisle markers out from the Court of Isles. Those are basically put out after all deployment before the start of the game. Those we'll talk about during the activations, but they are there to sort of start putting down the prey status onto opponents to uh, start identifying the people that the court want to kill and want to score points from killing. So moving to the take the lead phase, we rolled off and the court won the roll. Uh, I decided to pass the uh, initiative to Salandra so that uh, she could maybe put some suspects down that I could maybe start using through Newhouse's primary target ability to mark prey. And I needed her to come towards the Isle of Markers at that point. Then um, Salander was able to play the Die Hard objective on Gustav, which was an interesting one, but he did look like someone I wasn't going to be able to actually get and attack this round. So it's probably a likely score. And she played a Domination Marker out from hand to basically cycle the card, but also you know, threaten and make me deal with the marker itself. Um, at the end of that, we moved to the race plan phase, where she put her audacity down on Deathstroke, Infiltrate, Ratcatcher, and Malasia. I responded by playing from hand the Terrible Accident uh, card, which is remove the enemy boss or highest reputation miniature, which in this case is the same. Um, they have to be not on the game board at the end of the round. Again, that was more of a cycle to get through it because I didn't have the kind of cards that I wanted in hand just yet. Then Audacity for me went out on pretty much all of the aisles except for Ballard and the court. Then placed the event marker for the data extraction. Probably made a misplay here, uh, left it far too close to a certain somebody which we'll see later on. But my idea was that I was going to run Calvin up the board and sort of come around the flanking maneuver next turn. Um, I knew he was going to be able to reach there, but I didn't think that it would be contestable. I won't lie to you and tell you that the first activation of the game was a doozy because it really wasn't. Um, Gustav 
took the opportunity at this point to just dander off behind the building at the top of the board and used his manipulate from his inspire by starting with an eight of deathstroke to place down a suspect marker he did however uh, allow Salander to play a card from hand just by being activated she played free for all which looked like something she could easily score with all those rats at the middle of the board this turn so as i mentioned this is the second time playing with isles and i've always had difficulties in turn one of really sort of starting the role of um meaningful killing um there's never a problem getting isles to kill things but it's getting the meaningful killing rolling and it was not different today because i was faced up with Lots of little rats that I could easily pop off, but not actually score any points because they are a swarm. Um, unfortunately, and then rat catcher being defended by them, there was no chance of actually getting damage through on anybody with my first activation. So activated William Cobb and tried to sort of adjust the battlefield a little bit to give myself a wee bit more protection and try and keep rolling. Uh, he moved up. He had Inspire from the court. He placed out a suspect in front of him. He then scored the Isle's Tail card from hand, which was have a suspect and two friendly Isle markers within four inches of the same model, which the Sewer Swarm, which is still alive uh, to the east of the sewer is. So scored that from hand. Then he used the, the suspect marker that he placed to use the resource Talon's Claw to mark one of the Sewer Swarms as prey. Now, as I said, I couldn't score any points from um, removing the prey, but I thought if I could get some of the special actions from the court used, it might help me in the near future. So I took my throwing daggers, aimed one directly at the lamppost beside me, because I was worried about the guns up the street, and aimed the other two at the rat. Hit all three, removed the lamppost, removed the rat. The court itself... The boss then was allowed to trigger the boss's orders special, which would give me bonuses to attack within eight inches of him. And I moved one of the Isle Advice markers four inches because there was a casualty on the board. In immediate response, Salander activated Ratcatcher, who decided that he didn't have enough friends around, so used his ability on the back of his card to effort once to place an extra sewer swarm out within two inches helping really to contribute to that free-for-all card that's out. Then he used his special rat buff to uh, give all of the rats around him within a certain amount of inches, plus two move and plus one attack counter, should they ever actually have to attack something. Then, continuing uh, with a fairly active activation, he placed out the suspect that you can see behind him, which was within eight inches of the court and also out of line of sight of the court, including rat catcher. We had a look at this just to make sure allowing Salander to score Black Ops from hand. Towards the end of uh, Salander's activation, I played out the Court's Secure Bases objective card on the Isle Advice marker that is towards the sort of northwest of the board, which will tick up every activation that Salander makes that there isn't a enemy within four inches of it, which at this point wasn't true, but it was to try and sort of get things rolling out of my hand and put some... Um, put some pressure on models to, to go one way or another. This stage, I had just spent a lot of effort removing one rat, not for any particular reason, but uh, I was a little bit sort of out of it as to how to actually proceed. Uh, so I took it upon me to take the one of the three passes I had this round. And I thought two passes would probably still help me win the roll off next turn. The Malacia activated on Salandra's side and basically played keep away. Uh, cat and mouse, effectively. Even though the the mouse in this case is a very well-armoured mouse. Malacia started outside of her own deployment zone, so that was uh, enough to help her super jump with her special action. Uh, place a suspect with the manipulate provided by the Inspire that she started near enough to Deathstroke and then using all of that 12 inches of her uh, super fast neurotoxic drug speed to get down to the bottom left of the board, place another suspect out. Salandra's play style is to get max suspects out usually. Um, I know there's not as many benefits in the Soldiers of Fortune, but she was using Malacia as some sort of a flanker, looking to set up the sort of 
phase four ground war card again coming round towards my deployment zone and it looked kind of safe from where she was at this point to keep coming this way and keeping her away from deathstroke meant that um, if one goes down the other isn't right beside again a little dumbfounded as to how to proceed i thought you know what the only way i'm going to get guaranteed points this round is by going and claiming the event marker I probably should have left this the way later in the round to be able to react to anything else that happened but i ran calvin uh, after manipulating the domination marker away from where i thought the rats were going to come and get it basically i thought the rats were going to come around the south of the two sort of cylindrical towers to get in with the domination because they had 10 inches movement now so i decided to manipulate it push it away and unfortunately i don't have inspire because calvin is a free agent Took him his full 13 inches up to beside the event marker and used my special to activate my tracking trait. Next up, it is the superstar efficient uh, miniature on the Soldier of Fortune side, uh, Claire, or Infiltrate Up as it is. Um, infiltrate looked down the alleyway and saw a nice plump target in William Cobb. With her night vision goggles, she was able to see him even though he's quite a way away. Uh, she raised her her carbine fired off all of the rounds and um, there was just a little bit of cover but she still managed to do three damage to uh to cog that was sort of a, a bonus on this activation just before she did the real damage of the turn she then went around the back of the building she was in beside and moved over to where calvin had just committed to um, stopped where you can see her and then was able to place down a suspect and put out the uh, invasion guard because it was within four inches of a i believe a tree was the chosen uh, scenery element and uh, rolled a four so that's counting down from now on she then was just in range of both the domination marker and the uh, data extraction marker to hack both of them towards her one of them actually in base to base and the other close enough beside that sewer devoid of a audacity marker and any inspire because he was just out of range of the court henry ballard was the next to activate for the isles he just took his uh, his movement forward to sort of bolster where the fight was headed uh, but as i say no bonus action so that's where he stopped and that was that salandra took stealth up who had deployed under cover so he was able to move almost to the middle of the board he didn't have uh, any sort of audacity so he was able to leave a suspect behind before he moved. And Salandra put him here just to sort of threaten the middle of the board. I don't think there was any way the Isles could reach him, but if they did, then obviously Deathstroke was yet to activate and he could mop up easily. At this point, the court's secure bases uh, count was now at two. So it would score the next activation that Salandra had that didn't have a miniature within four inches of that Isle marker. Next was the original female killer in the court crew, which is Strix, a uh, very fun miniature, lots of damage dealt um, over the years, I'm sure. Um, I didn't, again, I had no idea what I was doing at this point. Uh, I kind of got lost with not having any prey out and not having anything really easy to kill nearby. Uh, I decided then just to maybe set up for sort of things like valuable commodities and uh, other sorts of things. Uh, so I moved forward with her up the eastern flank, I guess you would call it, placed out a suspect and dropped uh, a Venom dose out through overdrive, uh, which I would pick up on a later turn, which would help her hopefully if she was going to try and attack anything. Next, the number of bodies on the board really started to show as Slander was able to activate one of the sewer swarms and pop through the sewers um, right in front of them to go to the northeast and contest that domination marker up there. At this point, Salander was feeling fairly confident that the middle of the board was hers to control this round and that she could spare one or two extra bodies elsewhere on the board. Again, I was really struggling for ideas uh, as I activated Newhouse. I was kind of hoping that Newhouse was going to be able to use his primary target ability to treat one of Salander's suspects as mine and then use it to mark someone as prey but there really hadn't been an opportunity near enough to an oil marker to make that worthwhile so instead all i did was moved up 
Uh, I had Inspire from the court. I was able to pop out one of my own suspects. Uh, again, I just felt like I needed to sort of manipulate where the aisles were a little bit to put a little bit more pressure on. I fought one of the rats again, took another rat off the board, hoping to mill through the protection that Rat Catcher had out in front of him so that it wouldn't uh, stop me from doing you know, anything if I was ever to actually choose to attack him face up. Salandra at this point really wanted to activate Deathstroke, but she couldn't find a spot where she could fit him in in the middle to do what she wanted to do. So instead, she decided to move one of the rats just to beside Newhouse. Again, right next to the middle. And at this point, I guess, he, you know, outnumbering um, the types of models that were going to cause issues, even though Newhouse does have martial artists, it meant that the Sewer Swarm could actually make an attack next turn without having an audacity if it was deactivated before Newhouse did. Next up, the court jumped into action, and I say that almost ironically because uh, they had movement zero and they didn't have an audacity. Uh, obviously, they are the boss, so they can't, they only had the one action to do. But it was actually meaningful. They looked at the rat that had just moved next to the new house, didn't like the look of it, basically shouted some abuse at it, and uh, made it move four inches away. So, um, using the goad special action, uh, I was able to force the rat to move away. I did effort to do so because I needed to reduce it just to make sure it happened um, and Salander actually rolled two twos so it was so close to passing that test um, which actually turned out to be key because now it's more than four inches away from the middle of the board it's now more than four inches away from Ratcatcher so the protective cloak that he had of rats is now well and truly not close enough to help. So Deathstroke finally came to the party, and uh, came to the party with uh, a fair bit of action. He rolled down the street, uh, activated his good aim trait, which gave him bonuses to hit with his modified assault gun, which he pointed directly at the original Talon, William Cobb, who had already taken some damage from Infiltrate earlier in the turn. He was able to wipe Cobb off the board, uh, doing more than enough damage, uh, which was good news for, uh, for Salandra. But then I was able to play the Quartz Edict card from hand as a resource, which basically allows me to bring one dead Talon, one dead reanimated oil back to life within four inches of the court. So I was able to pop William Cobb right back on the board, healthy as can be, and now contesting the free for all objective. Into the recount phase now, and the traits section, there was only one trait that was active, which was uh, Calvin Rose's tracking that he got through his equipment that allowed him to move d6 inches, which I rolled, I believe, a six, uh, and move and contest the event objective. I tried to find different ways where I could actually get in contact with Claire instead, maybe set up an attack early next turn, but I had to settle for just stopping Salander from scoring the points. As Salander had initiative, we'll take a look at her scores cards this turn. The Black Ops he scored early on in the round. The Invasion ticked down throughout the round. Um, the Domination she scored because she moved the Rat through the sewer. Gustav was still alive, so Die Hard scored. Free For All scored because she just had Stealth close enough to be three versus two in the middle of the board. And Global Offensive scored because I didn't have enough suspects out to counter the four veterans she had on her side. Much less impressive on the other side for the court in terms of scoring. Only four points. Uh, the Isles Tail that I scored on William Cobb's uh, turn early on, and the court's secret bases, which ticked up to three some way through the turn. On to round two, and we rolled off during phase one. And once again, I came out on top and was able to choose what to do. So I chose to go first this round. Didn't have any phase one cards myself, but Salander played another domination marker. This one, um, along with the first scored one, this one was placed in a different place, which is more towards the center of the board. And I think Salander was hoping to crowd that metal and probably clean up some of the mess with uh, that big murderer in Deathstroke before the end of the round. Um, moving on to phase two, I was able to play out two cards this time. One being again, terrible accident, crossing fingers that it might score this time and the second one being the mission which is the William Cobb character card which 
scores if I choose a model with a reanimated oil trait, the chosen model removes the enemy boss marked prey as a casualty. I chose William Cobb just to be thematic, and also he's probably the one that's going to do a lot of damage in this group. And obviously, Deathstroke is right there, so we're hoping to get that chain started. Um, audacity wise, I placed Audacity out on Ballard, who didn't have one last turn, one on uh, William Cobb, one on New House, and one on Calvin Rose, leaving Strix and the court sort of without too much to do. On Salander's side, she has one on Infiltrate, one on Deathstroke, obviously, one on Stealth Up, and Malacia over in the far corner. So I tried to catch uh, Salander on the back foot by taking the first activation to try and remove a miniature. Um, I actually wasn't going to go after Deathstroke at this point because I wasn't confident that I could actually take him down. But the cards played out were sort of like a uh, don't mess with the I might be able to kill you and score lots of points from doing so. Um, Rackhatcher was more important, I think, to this turn because of the event marker and the domination event marker and obviously potentially another free for all and any other sort of um, control based objectives Slander might have in her hand. So Ballard was the guy to activate first, probably the cheapest henchman in the, in the entire crew, but well, this crew, sorry. Um, he bounded over and caught up with the rat catcher. He uh, attacked the rat catcher, and both of them efforted three times, and I was only able to push through four damage, which was not enough to take him out, uh, sadly. But I found a way to make points off it anyway with... Uh, the suspect that was right beside me, I used my Inspire Manipulate to remove Salandra's one and use the Evidence Tampering trait on Ballard's card to replace it with one of our own, which then allowed me to score the card, which is called Shadow's, uh, Shadow Claw, which is placed suspect within four inches of an enemy model that has at least one blood marker, which obviously I had just put a couple down on to Red Catcher. It was getting fairly fighty in the middle of the board and fairly hairy at the same time. Um, Stealth Op was next to activate. He popped a Titan Dose, meaning he's getting plus one to all his basic stats, making him very, very survivable, but also very, very killy. Um, he strode forward and stepped beside the suspect marker that Ballard had just placed down. Before um, Stealth used his um, Inspire Manipulate to remove it, the Isles were able to score the Isles Tail card because, again, he was within four inches of two Isle markers now and one of our friendly suspect markers. Uh, he then took a swing at Ballard and, with all the efforting, only managed to do uh, four blood, leaving Ballard alive. We probably forgot to use the invulnerability trait for Ballard, so it probably should be three, but it's not a big deal. Um, Slander was able to score a card off this, which was the Seek and Destroy, or Search and Destroy card, because she had effort enough times and caused enough hits. Next up, probably another surprise activation. Uh, I went with the Court. Uh, the Court didn't have Audacity, pretty much didn't have Audacity the entire game. I popped the boss, Boss's Order uh, special to use that sort of aura of attack bonuses to really sort of take control of the, the melee in the middle. Uh, I then played the Isles Labyrinth on Deathstroke, which would give Deathstroke the choice to either let me score points and move during his activation, or not move and uh, be enervated. So it was sort of a lose-lose for Deathstroke. Next up, Slander did actually activate Deathstroke, so the decision came nice and fast. Uh, at the start of this activation, the uh, Isles did play out the uh, court secure bases objective card on the aisle in aisle marker in the northwest which would start counting up if no one ended within four inches of it from this activation onwards destro considered um the penalty for the Oz labyrinth but decided to make a make an action before he decided to move or not leveled his assault rifle uh, at william cobb activated the good aim trait and blasted away with the three rate of fire two blood um gun Unfortunately, it all came up ones and twos, including a one on the strength dice, meaning the uh, the talent who had just been reincarnated uh, moments ago was once again unscathed. Salander then decided that it was worthwhile to let the court score the two points to get a preferential position with Deathstroke. 
uh, committing to the free-for-all objective as he moved. He moved slightly further north in order to try and draw the fight away from the, the midpoint of the board and the domination marker, hopefully trying to make the court make a bad decision one way or the other. Continuing the, the fight and the rumble in the middle of the board, I decided to take Newhouse up next. Newhouse, um, where he was sat and where Ratcatcher was sat, had a bonus to hit the, uh, the Ratcatcher who was li living on an edge, a couple of blood from, from death. Took his tactical action to throw knives at Ratcatcher and killed him outright because there were no rats within four inches in line of sight to take the hits instead. Newhouse then, rejoicing, uh, moved into the, the spot that Ratcatcher just left behind and used his Inspire from the court to pop down a suspect. After losing his glorious leader, the sewer swarm in the middle of the melee um, cried a little bit and then ran to the south to enable the soldier's fortune to hopefully score a ground war at some point at the end of this round, getting in place to be beside a scenery element which is within 8 inches of the deployment zone. Salandra then tried to cycle through her deck by playing out the overdrive as a resource and popping a venom dose uh, up towards the north where infiltrate was. It had taken me almost two turns to get into the swing of things, um, and two turns and I suppose the game before that I played, but this was when it started clicking with the prey mechanic for me, um, able to sort of set them up and knock them down a couple in a row. Um, I activated William Cobb next in the middle of the field, again, continuing to use those bonuses from the boss's orders, continuing to really fight the good fight in the middle of the board. Moved over to um, Stealth Up, who was in the middle of the board, surrounded by Ballard and Newhouse. Used the suspect that would have been put down before with the resource, the Talon's Claw, to mark him as prey, attacked him put Padium because I had so many bonuses to hit at this point. Uh, it, was, it was it was bloody and he really didn't have enough defense to block it, being outnumbered twice. Killed him and then scored the other Talon's Claw that I had in my hand, um, which is for, scored for having uh, removed someone as casually who's marked as prey. Salandra did get something done this activation, though she did play out the Invasion card as a resource to, at this point, basically turn all of my suspects who are within two inches of a veteran on her crew into not friendly to me anymore. The action didn't stop there. Uh, even without an audacity counter, Gustav towards the north of the map had line of sight to all of the isles in the middle of the board. That one remaining lamppost uh, basically bringing them all into, uh, into sight. Uh, picked his target, which was the near-dead Henry Ballard, uh, loaded up and shot off another set of rounds. Unfortunately, Ballard did succumb to this attack, um, doing enough damage to get past the invulnerability and the defense four. Next up was Calvin Rose. Uh, I decided at this point, I don't know if it was the right decision or not, but I decided to give up on the event marker towards the north uh, east because I knew that Infiltrate was able to activate after me and pretty much control where it was going to be. Um, activated my tracking special action anyway, just to give me flexibility after the turn and a bit more movement. Uh, used six, my, my full, uh, full movement to move to where you can see him on the main street. Placed down a suspect marker and just sort of set up a potential next turn showdown with Deathstroke. It was the turn of yet another sewer swarm to activate and again using their ability to run through the sewers uh, moved beside the sewer and popped all the way to the bottom of the map to reinforce that ground war hopeful score uh, near the other sewer swarm. Last one to activate for the Isles was Strix. I didn't have any audacity on her and basically just tried to set things up for a future turn. Decided to try and at least force the issue in the northeast um, with the event marker and put some pressure on. Uh, moved up my full distance and then used the Inspire to place the suspect up there. The plan was to use that suspect to lift a valuable commodities in the next turn. Malacia decided it was time to get back into the action uh, as she'd gone a little bit of a scout around the edges. Uh, she used her super jump and her full move to move to where you see her right in the middle street of the board where pretty much all the fighting's gone down. Uh, flanked by both of the rat swarms. 
and then pop down a suspect and was able to score black ops now it may sort of look like she might be able to be seen by the court from the tts but we just sort of figured that um the scaling on some of the miniatures and, and the base size was a little bit big so uh out of fairness that we determined that couldn't be seen and black ops could be scored Last activation for the round and for the Soldiers of Fortune it was Infiltrate who had the last audacity to use. And in another spate of efficiency and utility, basically used every last ounce of what she brought to the table. Um, she picked up the Venom Dose that was right beside her as she moved to where you can see her. Uh, used the backpack that she had equipped to remove the suspect marker that was there for free. Used her Inspire uh, to manipulate and place that suspect marker out that you can see also committed to the global offensive uh, card putting that down hacked the event marker uh chose not to hack a second um marker but hacked the event marker to beside where she is took aim and shot off another set of rounds at strix strix used a couple of uh, efforts through Acrobat to reduce the dice and, and only one blood ended up going through so two stun and one blood on Strix and then that was it uh, so as you can see the efforts there were basically to reduce the amount of suspects that were on the board that were uh, going to affect global offensive uh, and the fact that Deathstroke was within two of the suspect in the middle of the board um, meant that only two were friendly to the court because of the invasion resource played earlier, pretty much guaranteeing global offensive would score. So now into the recount phase and just one uh, one trait to track, I guess, which was actually Calvin Rose's tracking trait. He rolled yet another high enough number, uh, I think it was a five, and used that to basically get into base-to-base -base contact with Deathstroke, uh, starting to threaten him for the turn upcoming. So let's take a look at what was scored during the recount or during the turn actually in, in total. For the Isles, we have uh, an Isles Tail which was scored early on and then the Shadow Claw from the suspect placed uh, beside Ratcatcher when he wouldn't die the first time. And we have the Isles Labyrinth which was the trick or treat on Deathstroke. Uh, court Secure Bases which uh, eventually counted up to three uh, during Salandra's activations and the Talon's Claw for removing Stealth Op from the board, so 10 points for the court this turn. Over on the Soldiers of Fortune side, during the, the round they were able to score the Search and Destroy and Black Ops, and then at the end of the round, the Global Offensive that we talked about during Infiltrate's activation scored as well. Salander was also able to set up that ground war we talked about, hiding in her hand for another three points, and because she had sole control of the Data Extraction Event Marker, I dragged out a two-pointer from hand, which was an invasion. I think Salandra was a little bit upset that it wasn't one of the three-pointers that she may or may not have had in her hand. Into round three and phase one, uh, we rolled off, and once again the court came on top of that. Came out on top of that one. Uh, they have won all the rolls so far, and that, that was a little frustrating for the other side. Uh, during that phase, though, Salander was able to commit to yet another domination marker, which she placed over beside. Strix, uh, hoping to be able to control that sort of side of the board again with Infiltrate's uh, hacking ability and just sort of mobility and survivability. Into phase two, uh, the court already had out the mission from the turn before. Uh, played out Calvin Rose's escape plan character card, which uh, was nominated as the court as the member to be surviving at the end of the game to score that. Committed to the terrible accident card, uh, which is removing the boss or highest reputation miniature as casualty, or so them not being on the gaming area at the end of the activate or the end of the turn, and used the Talon's Claw resort to once again remove a suspect and mark Deathstroke as prey, hoping to score a big bonanza of points at one point this turn. Court had clearly changed their focus to turn the screw on the uh, Soldier's Fortune boss this turn. Uh, Newhouse was the first to activate, uh, running over and lifting his scimitar to slash at Deathstroke. Deathstroke was well prepared though, set himself to defend himself with a couple of efforts. And um, I played out the terrible accident card as a resource in order to get three free efforts this activation. So I didn't have to actually effort in, it in return. But unfortunately, the only attack dice that got through the defense five of the 
beast of a miniature was the strength dice and because of deathstroke's kevlar vest i actually ended up doing more damage with the efforts that he had to take than the actual scimitar that i slashed him with leaving him on one blood damage and three stun then i looked and i was like right i have to react to this and get something out of this um, because deathstroke had a blood damage on him i played out the um shadows claw card by popping a suspect down behind myself within four inches of a enemy model with a blood damage on it deathstroke didn't like that very much even though he didn't take a lot of damage and reacted next by uh, activating his devastating trait and taking a swipe at calvin rose right beside him calvin was able to defend himself just enough to survive leaving him on one health um he, he also used the uh the resource card of the terrible accent because i had two copies to at least give him two free efforts in that case and uh, deathstroke was able to score the search and destroy card because he made two efforts and got enough hits and uh, then also cycled out the venom dose card uh, placing it next to the suspect which he ran down towards and immediately picked it up again much in a knee-jerk reaction style calvin didn't like that very much and he also didn't like hanging around with just one health so to get some use out of him before anyone else decided to take him out potentially uh, gustav up the street he bounded down after deathstroke um, and swung at him with his reinforced gloves at this point deathstroke had done a lot of efforting this round we only had two stun damage uh, left out of his willpower total so he didn't actually effort in defense um calvin didn't have the ability to effort either and just squeaked enough damage past in order to knock out the big man and uh and really start turning the screw on the soldiers of fortune crew salandra did take the opportunity to play out the cyber attack card uh, as an objective and rolling the smallest amount of numbers so there's only three activations until those all counted down if at the end of those activations those suspects are still on the board or at least one of those suspects is still on the board she will score based on that malasia up next again just really trading blow for blow at this stage down this middle alleyway there seemed to be no other fight going on anywhere else uh, she decided that she was going to wheel in and try and remove a miniature that hadn't yet activated this turn uh, aiming for uh, William Cobb in the center. He efforted the maximum amount to defend himself as two. Uh, Malasia popped a Venom Dose and efforted the full three times but only costing herself the one. Um, then the punching began and unfortunately she only squeaked two hits through leaving Cobb on one stun damage. Those two hits did enable her to score the search and destroy a card from her hand though. Things had boiled over the last few activations, but they uh, took it down a notch this time when the court just activated to um, simply pop the boss's order special to give plus one to hit in the surrounding area. Hopefully trying to set up a kill box for De Deathstroke. We'll see how it goes. In an effort to staunch the bleeding, uh, and again, not cost herself any more points, Zalandra moved the sewer swarm as far south as possible just to avoid any potential gears of uh, talons who were bored and looking for something to do and again re-strengthen that position to set up yet another uh, ground war score at some stage in the future one of the few turns strix actually has on audacity in the game which which felt like a bit of a disappointment because she showed why she should have had them at this point uh, she was just ever so slightly uh, not in base-to-base -base contact with the infiltrate and uh, decided to take revenge for all of the shooting infiltrate had been doing at her in the previous turn step forward swung her paired katanas and removed the head of poor infiltrate before she got to activate this turn this was a, a big blow because it meant the event markers that have both been placed up here were now at risk again more danger reactions this turn because we we were uh, losing miniatures uh, very fast uh gustav who had audacity because basically there were no other henchmen or uh, allies to really give audacity to this turn but he took good use of it and um, ran through the sewer uh, to where you can see towards all the event markers that had been put under threat by strix and basically contested immediately the um, event marker for the data extraction 
uh, hopefully scoring cards from hand. He did commit to a free-for-all. Uh, Solander told me that she wasn't likely to score that, but at the same time she was looking to cycle through her cards in her deck to get as many three-pointers in her hand for the data extraction node to pull out. And again, did the same, played the invasion um, resource from hand to do the same, to continue pushing through her deck. So next up was William Cobb, the original Talon. And it was time. The death knell had been rung uh, for Deathstroke. And he decided that this was the point in time he was going to pop his special for the precise blow. He walked down the street, um, was able to attack the prone um, body of Deathstroke, who was knocked out, meaning his defense was already lowered by one. He had plus one from the precise blow and plus one from the court's boss's orders that had been popped earlier in the turn. So with all of the attacks that he was putting in, he was hitting on twos and with re-rolls on both the strength dice and the attack dice that he rolled. Uh, and every damage that was going to be pushed through was going to do an extra blood because, again, Deathstroke was knocked out. So it did way more than necessary. I think it was something like 18 blood damage uh, and Deathstroke was summarily removed from the table scoring the terrible accident um, and the mission card that was placed there. Uh, then took this opportunity to move one of the owl markers just uh, in front of Calvin because it died, uh, which then put two owl markers within four inches of Malacia and a friendly suspect within four inches of Malacia, allowing me to score the owl's tail. The reason that I was able to score all three cards in one go is because they were all played on different phases and activations of the game. Last activation of the round, and for the Soldiers of Fortune, was the remaining Sewer Swarm, who was down at the bottom helping score potentially another ground war. Salandra decided to get uh, um, Trixie, I guess, with the, the deck that she had left. She knew she had two domination cards, one in her hand and one in play. Uh, and she knew she could probably score the ground war on turn four if she tried hard enough. So decided to make a play to score the domination this round to give her another round to score another. Um, popped through the sewers and came up on the north side beside Gustav and now giving a 2 to 1 model count for the domination marker. However, I had held back a Gotham is ours resource card to move a marker up to 4 inches and was able to push the domination marker away from both of the uh, enemy miniatures. This was probably not the right decision because I probably could have netted more points had I moved the data extraction uh, node instead. Just before the round ended, the court were able to also uh, put another court secure bases into play, again on the same oil which had been far away from everybody else. Quickly go through the traits thing again, and um, Calvin Rose was definitely getting mileage out of his uh, tracking, uh, moved another, I think, six inches up the board to back into contact with Malacia to start threatening again, Malacia being the new boss of the Soldiers of Fortune. So looking at the objective card scored this round, the court managed to pull off the eight point activation, scoring the mission, terrible accident and oil's tail, all while removing uh, Deathstroke. Um, that was a big, big turning point of the game. Uh, but again, they only scored two other points in the turn with the Shadow Claw played out earlier, uh, netting them a grand total of 10 for the turn. Soldiers of Fortune actually only ended up giving up one point of their lead, um, keeping an 11-point lead going into the last round. They scored two copies of Search and Destroy throughout the turn. Uh, cyber Attack ticked down at some point without being triggered by the, the uh, court. And then the Data Extraction actually pulled the Domination card out of Solander's hand just as she would have planned. She did have the Deathstroke card in her hand that she would have loved to have scored that way because she didn't see a way to maybe uh, capitalise on those four points, but... Three points was a nice consolation prize. Into round four, and there was an 11 point gap with the Soldiers of Fortune out in front, with the uh, court really trying to claw that back, no pun intended. Um, phase one, we rolled off, and five for five, the court won the roll and chose to go first. Salandra did play out a resource at this stage, playing the overdrive for free to pop a Venom Dose onto the board, just to cycle through and actually got the uh, last domination into her hand. Uh, playing that out in front of her uh, to commit to that and putting it beside Strix, hopefully using Gustav and the Sewer Swarm up there to dominate that domination marker. On to phase two and the raise the plan. Um, 
Court going first had the terrible accent card out again for scoring for removing the highest rep uh, or the boss, which in this case is the same miniature again, Malacia. And then the complicated one, the Gotham is ours, which uh, basically I had to choose two scenery elements. Then the opponent chooses another one, and then I have to play it out, place out a suspect within four inches of all of those. Uh, and then at the end of the round, there still has to be one friendly suspect within four inches of all of those. I chose the uh, air conditioning building at the top and the first tower just south of that. And then Salander chose a tree, uh, a sole tree near Strix in the top right. Um, I was then able to place out the suspects in such a way that I hoped I would have them all left at the end of the round. In terms of audacity, the audacity went out on basically all of Salander's miniatures left, which was two on Sewer Swarms, one, one on uh, Gustav, and one on Malacia. I basically left out the court, uh, and everyone else got one. First up was William Cobb, uh, trying to really um, earn that title as the original Talon, uh, going for the boss the second time round. I played out the Talon's Claw resource to remove a suspect and mark Malacia as the new prey. And also put the Isles Labyrinth card on her to restrict her movement or allow me to score points if she is to run away. I then moved beside her, activated the Precise Blow special to give myself that bonus to hit, and tried to start chipping away at her. Malacia is very hard to kill even before the Venom dose that she takes uh, because that, that, that gives her invulnerability. But in this case, she just had the medium armor and the martial artist, so she couldn't be outnumbered. So it was still quite hard to actually get any damage through. Uh, I only put three blood in. Um, I wasn't able to fully effort because of the amount of stun that I had uh, from previous turns, but that is where uh, she was left on three stun and three blood. Salandra reacted by activating uh, Malacia next. Malacia was the boss at this stage, and um, because she's also a henchman, she can actually inspire herself. Uh, so smack bang in the middle of the board in the scrum, surrounded by a few miniatures already, and with me having set up prey and cards in place to score if she's removed. Uh, Salandra set about making a different plan to proceed with the turn as she didn't really have anything to do with punching me in the face and scoring points that way. Uh, she was sat on one of my suspect markers so used her free manipulate from her Inspire to remove that. Um, then she super jumped and moved where you can see her now. The moving then allowed me to score the Isles Labyrinth that I'd played on her the turn previous. Sat upon the suspect marker on those pipes, she removed it as well, thinking that it was going to deny me the Gotham is ours. Um, unfortunately, I think Salandra admitted she had thought it was a different tar that I had uh, identified as the scenery element, but it was the one south of that. Um, anyway, removing all these suspects was causing blood damage to the court as well, and she was hoping to take another suspect marker off the, the board later in the turn to deny me Calvin Rose's card. So this turn, this activation was all about trying to chip away at what I had set up to score, um, but unfortunately it didn't really stop any of them because it turns out that she did not have the range from Gustav to actually reach any of the other remaining suspects on the board. Up next, I just activated the court because now I knew where the enemy boss was for the rest of the round, and I activated the special boss's orders to give me plus one to hit her uh, on those pipes. The last of the actual humans in uh, Salandra's list to activate was Gustav. Uh, Gustav, again, tried to measure to both of the remaining suspects, trying to claw and find a way to remove that last suspect to take the court off the board didn't have the range, uh, just like an inch, inch or two out on both sides. He did, however, have uh, an audacity marker and Salandra had an invasion in her hand, so she decided to try and score that um, by running down to the building, as you can see, um, and basically identifying one of those trees as the uh, scenery element, which was within four inches of him and the suspect, and within four inches of the court on the other side. Calvin Rose, finishing out his good performance in this game, uh, popped himself over the top of the building with his acrobat and all his uh, range and speed. Um, Ball his fists and tried to take a swing at Malacia in the same way that he had removed Deathstroke or knocked, knocked Deathstroke out to toughen uh, Malacia up to be removed eventually. 
Uh, Slander took this opportunity to also play out a free-for-all, just because it was the last turn. Get it in play, keep cycling through your deck, see if there's something else that will come out to score points. Uh, the attack itself only did two damage, leaving Malacia on one stun damage uh, and still standing. Uh, all that medium armor really, really, really helping. Next up, the Sewers, that sewer Swarm that had been bouncing back and forth between the bottom and top of the board just continued to do so uh, because it was a lot of fun. Uh, also, as we said, setting up that easier to score grind war uh, for, for turn four, looking to sort of dominate one of those pieces of scenery down at the bottom with the other Sewer Swarm waiting to activate later on. It was a tale of two different bosses for the Soldiers of Fortune and they both met at the same fate. And New House was next to activate for the court, and again that range of being an acrobat and being fast and, and just just give him the ability to jump over the buildings, find a spot where he could attack Malacia and put just about enough damage through to remove her as casually. That was scoring the terrible accident that had been played earlier, and also the Talon's Claw card now played from hand for another two points. Next. Next up was the second Sewer Swarm, but let's just rewind a little second. Uh, once Malacia went down because she was prey, the court was able to perform a special action. I decided to go to the Sewer Swarm that had already moved, try and move it out of the way of scoring a ground war. Uh, unfortunately, there was no way, uh, there was no legal placement that I could move that four inches and be outside of an element that Salandra could reach one way or another. I uh, moved it anyway into base base contact just for fun, but then the remaining Sewer Swarm moved up to sort of solidify that ground war uh, using it on, I think it was like a little vending machine just beside the building there, uh, some sort of generator. Yes, a Nuka-Cola vending machine, which would hopefully eventually score her her uh, second ground war of the game. Next up, Strix finished out the game by claiming the uh, data extraction marker for the first time for the court, even though I placed it in the first round. Fairly disappointing that I gave it up two times and only scored it once. Um, but then we moved into the recount phase to see who might be the winner. So the culmination of the Oils turn actually scored 17 points this turn. Um, starting at the start, they scored the Oils Labyrinth after Malacia moved originally. Um, scored the court secure bases as that eventually ticked up to three because there were no uh, enemy models within four. Then from the removal of uh, Malacia, the second boss, the Talon's Claw and Terrible Accident were scored. Um, escape plans were scored at the end of the round because the court is sitting alive on one health and the Gotham is ours was scored because there were enough uh, suspect markers within four of the designated scenery elements. Then right at the end of the game uh, we had the data extraction node and the valuable commodities three point card was pulled out of hand to score immediately. The early round dominance that uh, the Soldiers of Fortune really had in this game, which was quite impressive, um, culminated in not being much left in the deck that was easy to score, and obviously low model count running into this round. So Slander was able to, to score that ground war as we talked about, and the invasion that Gustav popped down on his activation ticked down and scored, giving her five points for the round. So that left the score agonizingly close uh, at 41 to 40 at the end of the game. Um, very frustrating for Solander because she's, she built up such an early lead and such as her, her powerhouse uh, moving down the middle of the board, only to be denied right at the end of the game by the three point coming out of the hand for the data extraction rather than a two point. It was a really close run game and I, I will be honest, as the court player, this is my second game of court, I'm still finding it difficult to sort of get the engine running with the prey down quickly and picking targets, um, but they really do damage when you get in and close. Uh, it, it's kind of scary. You're, you're looking at those those weapons, the, the oil knives, and you're seeing that they do one blood. And you're like, well, one blood isn't going to kill anybody. But then you pair that with the likes of the boss's orders, the precise blow and the combo on call, and it all starts mounting up the fact that they have to block it you know, twice before they can actually get a successful block. It's a really, really, really deadly crew. Not immediately my first play style, uh, but it, it was a strenuous and very long game for both of us uh, and you know neither of us came out of it uh, unscratched shall we say on Salandra's side again I, i'll say same for her this was her second time playing soldiers of fortune even though she's played against me a good few times but uh, the, again first time we either of us have really put deathstroke on the board or the second time and um, 
you know, he is very worthy of his points. Unfortunately, he was subject to the worst um, of bat whiffs, shall we call them. Um, you know, just in the key turn where he could have removed the model before it activated, just rolling all those ones and twos, uh, you know, having Salandra digging through her card to see if there's any other modifiers she can apply. Um, frustrating in that sense, but, but I mean, all employment that she was able to get, the scout, the, the undercover and hidden, uh, really, really got those early turn scores that, that I've probably struggled to get with Soldier's Fortune, the sort of the, the um, free-for-alls and the uh, ground wars in early turns. So she really managed that well. Uh, Infiltrate was really good for the two turns as she was alive and then just crumbled to the paired katanas of Strix on the, the top right in that fight for the markers shall we call it, in the snow. Again, really, really interesting. Um, you know, it's definitely a crew that for the for Salandra, she'll enjoy trying different things in. And I think she really enjoys playing with both Infiltrate and Malacia as they offer a lot of options. So we, we did this last time, we're doing it again, the sort of MVP on each side, most valuable uh, player or miniature, I guess, in this case. Uh, Salandra has chosen Infiltrate, uh, who, you know, we said is so full of utility, so full of efficiency. Um, specifically calling out the time in turn one, which she, she was able to use her hidden advanced position to absolutely mess with all the plans that I decided to create in the northeast of the board. Uh, had the range to move over after shooting successfully three times, getting three blood into Cobb. Uh, had the range to move over and hack all the markers away from me. Uh, towards yourself, place the suspect down, get every single action you want out of her. Uh, it only was cancelled out, thankfully, for me, by Calvin Rose's tracking that, that allowed him to sort of deny that event marker. Side, it, it really did come to, down to a team effort, and there was a lot of sort of uh, chipping away at the bigger miniatures. A lot of uh, Salander's miniatures were quite tough to get damage through, and but until I guess they take damage and they went down a lot quicker. Um, so for me, my MVP is, is probably Calvin Rose because he offered a different type of attack. You know, blood damage, it's very easy just to be like, well, I'm going to effort as many times as possible to reduce your dice. Calvin brought the, the potential for the double stun, you know, to, to sort of put the fear into people. Uh, you know, epitomized by him knocking out Deathstroke after Deathstroke had, you know, had an attack, efforted three times, been attacked, efforted three times and he was just on the brink so Calvin was able to come down and put enough into him to take him out. I also really liked the tracking equipment that I put on him. It really gave me an opportunity to correct the mistake I made by running him all the way up the flank. You know, it gave him so much range. Yes, it's uh, after the turn, but it sets you up so well next turn, especially since um, your opponent has already sort of maybe planned for where they were going to be. So he was fun, and uh, uh, even as a free agent uh, without the the benefit of an Inspire from the court, uh, he really still got a lot done. Um, it was definitely a worthwhile play at both of these types of archetypes of crews. Uh, and if you've gotten this far and you don't actually know how to play Batman Miniatures 3rd Edition, we've actually created a series of how-to videos, all about five minutes each, 11 videos in total, which range from what do you need to actually play a game of Batman, whether it be online or in person, uh, to you know how to construct an objective deck. So head on over to our channel and uh, check that pl playlist out. You can also subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video if you want to see more content like this. We always plan to put out a battle report at least uh, every two weeks. And we're now going to fill in the week in between with hopefully some uh, some of our thoughts and opinions on uh, good strategy tactics, uh, you know, spotlight of the, the, the different types of miniatures in the game and what they bring to the table. So again, thank you for watching, folks. If you want to join us and chat, uh, Batman, there's always the Arkham Rejects Discord channel, which will be linked below. Uh, happy to have anyone in there to come and chat about the game and again, learn and uh, talk tactics.